The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. We have some jobless claims numbers. We have some PPI out this morning. We have markets basically flat right now. You have an S&P flat to the tick, trading at 6,015. We were a little bit higher coming into that 830 economic number, talking about jobless claims, coming at 217,000 for the weekend in November 9th. You had producer prices coming in for October up 0.2%, basically in line with S. Estimates, and you have the market dip a bit. We do have some reaction in yields. Nonetheless, s and is flat at 6,016. NASDAQ 100, slightly in the red, off by about 16 points. 21,140, the Dow up 100. 44,211, and the Russell right now up by three. But you see the little bit of a pullback in the Russell. And the last couple days, yeah, how about it, man? Right, you're down almost 3% from those highs. From 24.55 down to 23.85. Nonetheless, we have markets chopping around. Bitcoin up to 94000 yesterday. We're technically higher by $1,000 on the session because you did pull back 91260 And yeah, let's get into crude. Above $69, $69.32. And let's jump to yields first, then the dollar, then gold. There's your volatility on the jobs number. Now, coming into that, we'll put it on a daily. I mean, check out the day. Right, you're talking about lower lows, lower highs, just for some context, because you put it on a five minute and we have a little bit of volatility. But man, on a daily basis, you got lower price, higher yield coming at you. And right now, we're talking about a 10 year yield that's approaching 4.5 percent. We're at 4.45 percent, approaching 4.5 percent on the 10 year. And with that, we're going to get some Fed speak. You're going to have Chairman Powell, he's going to be out there today speaking in Dallas. Yeah, the U.S., uh, he's going to discuss the U.S. economic outlook in Dallas, Texas. Then you have also Tom Barkin, Richmond Fed president, and John Williams, New York Fed president. They're going to be delivering remarks later in the day. So we're going to get a little Fed speak with yields rising. And, man, yields are rising. The dollar, dollar is almost going parabolic, 107 now. We're at a critical level in a lot of markets right now. On a weekly basis, check out the dollar. Okay, we're pushing the higher boundary. You break above this, where are we going to? At least 108, you break above there, 110, and potentially 115. Now, critical area, though, that's an area of resistance. We're going back to the highs in 2023, the highs this year as well. Dollar strength to 106.73. We were above 107. And that was about 6 a.m. this morning. So we've pulled back a bit, but nonetheless, dollar at 107 right now the 10-year at about 4.5 percent and yeah that's a tough one for gold gold continuing to pull back we hit 2540 this morning when you were the dollar above 107 we've pulled back a bit to 2561 you put it on a daily we touched almost the 50 percent and that is the area they chopped around from august till september but it's quite a pullback. And maybe 2480 to 2500 is in the cards. We hit 2541 on gold, down from 2800. And on a longer term basis, you know, you did complete an A to B, C to D that started in February. That move from about 2000 up to 2450, back to 2300, to 2775, 2770. And yeah, we hit 2801. So maybe 2480 is in the cards. Maybe we come back and test the highs of about 2450. Was That's just the highs we're at in May. Longer term, I mean, at some point, you're going to get a pullback from 2000 to 2800. Gold up 40% from where we were in February. And as I mentioned, so critical areas across the board, whether you talk about the 10-year, right, approaching that same area. That was the lows of 2022. 109 and change right now. We're at 4.45%. And then, of course, the dollar, technically, at a very critical level as well, at 106.76 on the dollar. All right, let's jump right to 
the Fed. We're going to hear from Chairman Powell this morning uh, or later this uh, later today. And this was an interesting article. I read this last night, I think. Yeah, this was out yesterday afternoon. So I didn't talk about it on the show yesterday. I read it last night. And it's especially interesting how far some of the ranges are about where the neutral rate or where the Fed wants to get to to not get, be restrictive or accommodative. That's their ideal goal with the numbers where they are right now. If they could just get to where they're at our star, the neutral rate, we just got jobless claims, 217,000, down 4,000 from the week prior. Unemployment, healthy, markets at all-time highs. But where is the natural neutral rate? I mean, check out. I'm just going to glide down to the part that I wanted to get to. Widely consulted models put the neutral federal funds rate anywhere from 2.75 to 4.6%. Now, you can call them tail risks. You can call them outliers, okay? The midpoint of the Fed's policy rate is currently right at the top end of that range. They're at 4.5 to 4.75. They're probably going to go down to four and a quarter. If they do go down to four and a quarter, okay, because right now, you're at about an 80% probability, 78 point something, I think it is. I was checking it out yesterday, and I think we're right there, 79.3 now. That actually just updated even off the recent numbers. This is the range that we're at right now. And as of the December 18th meeting, the market is pricing in about a 4 to 1 probability that the Fed cuts to 4 and a quarter to 4.5. Well, the middle of their range then would be at 4.3. Well, this article is telling you that at 4.3, some of the widely consulted models would put that under the neutral rate, therefore being accommodative that could influence inflation on the way up. So we're at this range that we're now in where some of the models are predicting that's just the higher lo for longer in terms of where we were and where we've been. Uncertainty about the neutral rate has risen, perhaps because the structural changes in the economy are relatively recent and will take some time to assess. That's a, it's just a risk you want to be aware of, right? Where is that? Where are we post-COVID with AI and margins? And where is the natural rate of growth? And how does that speak to where we go for yields? Because if the Fed's overnight lending rate is somewhere in the range of a three, which is very possible, then where should the 10-year be? And where should the yield curve be? And the market can probably handle it. It's telling you that it can handle it when we have the S&Ps at 6,016 and you have the tenure at 4.45%. And the market is much more reasonable in terms of where we come down the line in future cuts. So let's just take this one for granted. And it's not taken for granted that we go to four and a quarter. We get one cut. Where are we by June? By June of next year. We're probably going to get maybe one cut, maybe two, but there's a 50% chance we either get one cut or none by June of next year. Is that remarkable? I think that's remarkable. That's speaking to the market looking for higher rates right now going forward because we're thinking we're at four and a quarter by December 18th. And then the market's saying, and there's a decent chance that we stay there by June of next year. Get ready for higher yields potentially, stronger dollar. We'll see how gold reacts. We had a lot to talk about, folks. Disney earnings, Cisco. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and technique to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P negative by three points, NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red, the Dow up by 85. And yes, yeah, some of the equities with movement this morning, you got Cisco down and up and we're back to almost flat on their numbers. You check out Disney. We'll dig into those. Disney, strong numbers up by $10. You're getting a nine to 10 percent pop on their acceleration. And yeah, let's go over the Disney numbers. Because you talk about a pullback, but I think they're finally getting it together. And longer term, you know, I'm a believer in Disney. I am. Doesn't mean it has it's been easy on the way down because check out this equity longer term. Man, you're sitting at levels that we're sitting at right now in 2015. But right now we're going to open at 112. 120 is going to be the next area longer term on Disney. You see that that was the area going back to where we were actually in 2015. So 120 is going to be the next stop now that we're going to be pushing 113 this morning. All right, 113 is going to close this gap back here from May, the gap here as well. 123, right out there in the cards, right? If we're going to open above 110, which we are this morning, it's going to close it all. And the next stop, probably, assuming the market can hold up, but get into the numbers because they're big, man. They don't always provide guidance. I was listening to Bloomberg earlier this morning. It's a great point. And they have guidance in here for 2025. And then the company expects double digit earnings per share growth for both. 26 and 27 fiscally guidance that includes its fiscal 2025 26 and 27 going all the way out they had a strong quarter the numbers they come in with for disney where are they come on there we go a buck 14 versus a dollar 10 revenue of 22.57 versus 22.45 so they barely squeak out a beat on the top and the bottom line but you're talking about net income increasing to 460 million and then you talk about direct-to-consumer, okay? This includes TV networks, direct-to-consumer streaming, and films up 14%. That revenue to $10.83 billion. 
some of the films out there, Pixar 2, Deadpool and Wolverine. They also have Moana still coming out. $316 million, those films alone. And they're going to become, they are profitable now in their streaming business. Disney's combined streaming business, which includes Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, reported an operating income of $321 million compared with a loss last year. It's all coming in the ad segment. That's where the whole streaming business is going. That's why the TV business was always ad-based. You can make more per consumer by selling them ads than you can by signing them up. Yes, you want to pay a premium? Pay it. I'm going to change my Netflix subscription because right now I'm paying on the top end $24, $26 a month, something like that. Ridiculous for one streaming service. I love Netflix. You don't have to anymore. We can watch some ads, and I probably don't need the top one, which has like four. You can watch it four different places in the house, and you know I have it in my office. It's on the main TV. Tommy might have it on his tablet occasionally, so I signed up for it. But no, it doesn't make sense. Disney Plus core subscribers, okay, grew by 4.4 million or 4 percent, 122.7 million. Now average revenue dropped a bit. Okay, but here's the kicker. Half of new subscribers are choosing the ad supported tier. I'm surprised that actually 50% are saying, give me the more expensive one with no ads. Streaming revenue for ads up 14%. Okay, ads is where it's going to be, man. For full year profit, 875 million. Yeah, and the parks are doing well, too. Domestic parks operating income rose 5% to 847 million. They have Moana 2 coming out, and they have something else coming out. Um, what do they talk about? They got another good movie. I'll pull it up at the break. Lion King, yeah. Mufasa, the Lion King, coming up. And then remember, they're going to have some... And listen, I own Disney in the longer term. All right, be out there. But they've also got the Star Wars coming. The Star Wars got a couple films in the next couple years, maybe two or three, um, and a couple other Captain America out there. We'll go over that slate at some point. But, you know, the streaming business making money and why are they going to do it? They're going to do it because of ads, folks. Yeah. So Netflix. Look at Netflix, man. $830. Same deal. Ads. That's what was I just talking about, right? I pay for the ultimate plan, basically. That's ludicrous, paying $25 for one streaming. There's no reason... It's going to be ads across the board. Um, yeah, enough said. All right, ASML. Quite an acceleration for them. Up, what, $32 right now in the pre-market to seven oh five. We take a look at those numbers right now. And, yeah, you're going to be pushing about 700 for ASML up to seven oh five from 673 We jump around to some of the Magnificent 7. Amazon shares, all-time highs to 215 yesterday. You trade up to 215.99, We're barely high on the pre-market. Tesla shares, quite a ride, up to 362, and we're trading at 326. You got to know you're going to deal with some volatility in this equity, no matter what, especially with what's. There's going to be a lot of times that there's going to be news that breaks on Tesla. I think. And so get ready for the ride if you're in it. It's going to happen overnight occasionally. But you see the acceleration. My goodness, right? From 211 to 358, we're trading at 330 on Tesla. We'll take a look at some of the other equities. Microsoft, slightly in the red after their acceleration yesterday. I mean, $11. These equities. Google shares, slightly lower. You jump over to Meta, slightly lower by $4 as well. All right. So jumping back real quick, talking about the Fed and what you know, this headline talking about how far they can lower interest rates. December, an 80% chance we get one interest rate, okay? But where do we go from there? If the neutral rate, look at how large the range is for widely consulted models of just under 3% to as high as 4 and a 5, 4.5. The middle range of that is what? 3.65? Yeah. And if the Fed has to settle at 3.75, we're going to be at four and a quarter by December 18th, the market's pricing in. And maybe 10 years need to be a little bit higher if the Fed's going to be stuck at 3.5 to 4%. The 10-year yield should not be 4.5% if the Fed is going to end up longer term at three and a half. 
It shouldn't be at 4.5 even if they end up at 3. Usually you're getting about percent and a half to 2% maybe for the overnight lending rate to 10 years. So it's a risk I'm watching. And yields in dollar are reacting. We jump over to the 10-year. There's a little pop, so a little bit of a pullback. But uh, as I mentioned, don't get too caught up in that one because keep your eye on this trend. Lower lows, lower highs. We're at 109.18 right now, and you get the 10-year just off 4.5%. And we jump over to the dollar right now, sitting at 106.62. And on a longer-term basis, that's a critical area for this dollar, bumping up against resistance for the last two years. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll be back for the opening bell. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everybody. We got markets open. You got the S&P up by two points to 6,018. All the markets turn green. NASDAQ 100 up by five. Dow up 70. The Russell leading the way percentage wise up almost four tenths percent at 2392. Bitcoin nearing 92,000 this morning. Crude with a 69.23 price point off the lows. How about it yesterday, right? 66.94. And yeah, gold lows overnight 25.41. We're trading at 25.68. I mean, it looks dire, and it is a dramatic pullback, but look at how much volatility you have 
when you can barely see the acceleration to higher price. We're up by almost $30 off the lows we were at at 5 a.m. this morning. Nonetheless, gold off $18 on the session. That's the type of volatility we're dealing with. And yields pulling back a bit. So you're talking about a 10-year right now, positive by five ticks, and we're 14 ticks higher off of where we were this morning. We're sitting at 4.42%. 4.42, and the dollar on the open, DXY. Yeah, keep your eye on that 107 price point. The highs back in October of 2023, 107.34, and we just hit 107.06. This morning, the highs of early this year, we eclipsed it. We never got a 107 handle. We got up to the size about 106.50, so we're bumping up against there, and there's kind of nothing in the way of this. 108, 108, a nice round number maybe, but beyond that, there's nothing standing in the way if we really are. You know, if the Fed's going to settle and pause, and we're going to be dealing with them pausing for a year or two, and I say pause, maybe we get one cut, right? The June meeting says we might get a cut in December, and then the market's saying things are going to slow dramatically from there, and they probably should, as in there's so much unknown that it might be prudent to make sure you don't go too far below the neutral rate if there's going to be tariffs that could in, in, be inflationary and if the market is just on fire with a neutral rate is somewhere in a three range going forward all right what else we're looking at let's jump around yeah, so Thune in charge of the Senate. This was out last night. John Thune, new Senate leader. He was second behind McConnell. So he wins the vote. And we'll see how we progress. He served as the number two, I think, since 2019, potentially. And we'll see how he's going to go, because he's got his first test with Mr. Gates. Now, as I said in the tent earlier, right? Sometimes the most simple explanation, folks, okay? Uh, this one surprised us all, and it's called setting the bar as low as you possibly could. It's not going to happen for Attorney General, and my goodness, I hope it doesn't, because if it does, then watch out. Exactly. Uh, but this was a, a note to Mr. Gates to allow him to resign from Congress days before an ethics panel a Republican House ethics panel releases their investigation to the public. And meanwhile, the circus is going to revolve around Gates versus any other potential pick that's at the top there. And, you know, you're talking about even Pete Hegseth talking about defense, right? Yeah, nothing like what would happen with gates okay but that's why he's in there and we'll see if it plays out but don't get distracted by some of that stuff because sometimes it's just that quick but thune and i mention it because it's tough to imagine the senate being okay with that pick to put it lightly and we'll leave it at that so jobless claims out this morning 217,000, the four week average lowest since may so this again right look at all this data why does the fed need to rush if they're coming into a four range where some of the models line up for the neutral rate jobless claims lower yeah initial claims to 217 and the initial claims four week moving average to 221 so strong numbers across the board ppi as i mentioned 0.2 percent right in line ppi month over month core ppi a little bit hot 0.3 percent but on a yearly basis 0.1% higher, 2.4, and 3.1. But decent numbers in this market right now. All right, where else do we go? What else do we have? We talked about the Fed. Yeah, we've talked about Bitcoin. Yeah, how about the yen? So, we were talking to our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday about the dollar yen. And boy, you know, so much of what we're doing in terms of our dollar but look at the spike today even up to 156 238 now the dollars pulled back a bit you have the yen pulling back to 155 62 but yeah the yen continues to weaken higher highs higher lows we got another green bar on a daily basis we're at 155 62 and you know maybe we have to accelerate to some of these price points and then that's the trend the yen look at potentially 160 up there Maybe that's the 108 area in the dollar. 
Maybe you really come back, test these highs at 107, 348, 108 area, your spike from November 2022. But I don't know what's going to slow down this dollar right now with where things are going. Okay, now let's jump over to Super Microcomputer. I wanted to talk about this one. Down another 8.6% today, okay? Yesterday, they come out and say that they're going to delay their filing of its report. It's just a lesson, folks. Now, it's nothing to say that, you know, they might be holding off, getting anything in order, and maybe you do get a bid once they try and resolve this. But look at how much this stock is down from where you traded on the first revelations that there was potentially accounting problems. You're talking about you're now at 50% of where you were. The point is, man, it stinks to cut losses sometimes. You know, you're at 50, you're at 34 the next day. You say, man, maybe I'll get a bit of a rebound. You were just at 90. It's worth what it's worth. Get out of the kitchen sometimes. You take a look at this thing up to 122. You're now trading at $18, which is where we were in May of 2023. Okay, after a run up to $122. Don't be afraid to cut and run sometimes. Pretty remarkable. And look at Gold's clawing back. Yeah, 25.70.60 right now. We're $230 off the all time highs. But to put that in some context, we're almost at a 382 retracement of just the second run we had this year alone for Gold longer term. I think Gold's in a good spot. And then where's crude going to go? Because we put this on a shorter term basis. And you can see that 72 is going to be a problem to the upside. We're trading at 69.07. You got a pretty well-defined channel on this bottom side in terms of where we're chopping around. You break above that, $78. But I don't see that coming anytime soon. There's always potential in the months to come, but not right now with what's coming down the line, as Teddy and I talked about yesterday. All right, we jump around to some of the movers, checking into some of these equities. Disney, up by 10.5%. Yeah, look at that open, man. That's a big quarter for Disney. Turning the turning the corners on their streaming, okay? And they give a forecast that the market likes all the way a few years into the future, which they rarely do. Cisco, down 2% to 5802. ASML moving higher to 5.2% to 708. We check in on NVIDIA shares up to 146. We'll be right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. 
all first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the fund involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets rolling over a bit. S and P's right now are negative by 11. We're trading at 6,004, right where we were at about 2 a.m. Eastern time. You get below there, 6,000, that nice round number. But yeah, the S and P's trade down by about 15. All the markets barely in the red this morning. Yeah, look at the moves in Bitcoin. Bitcoin moves a thousand dollars every five to ten minutes now. Ninety thousand three sixty on Bitcoin. And we jump over to advanced auto parts. So check out the longer term chart of this thing, right? Now, this was just on this chart. And it's remarkable in terms of channels, even when you break below a downtrend channel, right? You think to yourself, folks, OK, advanced auto parts, you're trading at 244 in the beginning of 2022. You're in a downtrend channel, even if we extend that to the right, let's just say we're Looking on this portion, right? And you begin and you say, are we really going to break below the downtrend channel? And you break away from it, man. Now, that was in May of last year. And they've continued. And I say, you know, not really a well intact ch channel. But look at the bounces still on a longer term basis. Maybe you got a little bit ahead of itself in terms of how bad things were so quickly. But nonetheless, you're still in a downtrend channel. You're down by 4%. And the news out there from them, they're going to close stores. That's how they're going to turn it around as the sales outlook misses views. 350 to 750 million is what it's going to cost them. Okay. Closure of about 500 stores, 200 independent locations, and four distribution centers by the middle of next year. To their credit, that's pretty quick, middle of next year. Jobs are going to be involved. It's going to cost 350 to 750 million. They have severance in there, lease terminations, everything that goes along with it. And, yeah, the market's saying, well, we'll trade a little bit higher on that news as you're up by about 4% now for advanced auto part. Checking in. Disney up $10. ASML right now up about 5% on their news. And then you jump over to Tesla. A little bit of consolidation at 325, but yeah, we'll see where Tesla goes. Volatility down about four dollars. We jump over to Salesforce this morning, down about two percent. Quite an acceleration for them. With the market to 348, we're now back to 334. I mean, look at this thing on a longer term basis, right? Now well above this double top to 348. Maybe you're going to come back and test 311. If you're looking to get in, that's where you'd want to be in. 311, maybe 312 area. Kind of that double top. Maybe you come back and make a natural test of Salesforce. Amazon pulling back a little bit right now, down about half a percent. Microsoft in the positive. Quite a day for them yesterday. You jump over to Amazon. So this one's interesting. I was just talking about ad tier networks, right, and how... And I agree. So I have Paramount in the house, too. We got too many right now. This is, we're going to trim up the, the amount of streaming. 
but I think I'm going to stay an Amazon Prime member. And this is an upsell from them. But, yeah, you're talking about regional sports. And that's one of the things people love about live most of all. Right? So you're going to be able to get the FanDuel Sports Network, formerly the Bally Sports for, uh, Network. And that's the deal from Diamond. And, yeah, it's going to have live sports on there. And they have NBA and NHL negotiating with Major League Baseball. I love NHL, folks. Um, and I'm not familiar with what they have. Amazon Prime Video already, already airs the Yankees Network. They have their games, so live sports. That's going to be one way because it's not just going to be people going for ad networks. It's going to be people trying to trim and cancel subscriptions and then come back online. And so live's a great way, right? I, I haven't watched any of the Tyson and Jake Paul. Isn't it a, a, a lead up to the fight, a three-part documentary, and then they're going to have the fight live, I believe. But we jump around to some of the streamers. Warner Brothers Discovery up by 1.9%. Yeah, they're going to be higher with the, with the Disney news that maybe just streaming in general. Maybe that's what you're getting here. Because look at Warner Brothers Discovery is up by 2% right now. You got Paramount. No, Paramount is flat. Netflix up by almost a percentage point right now. Look at that chart, man. Let's see. Whew. Quite a turnaround from Netflix. Some of these equities, man. You know, Netflix, Meta, right? These pullbacks. Talk about overstated sales. 88 to 600 from Meta. The lows, yeah, October of 2022. But you jump back to Netflix shares. I'm going to go further. It's like widening to the upside, maybe even breaking above it. How wild would that be? Now, it's not parallel. You want to see some parallel. It's an art, not a science. But boy, that is... That is something when you're now breaking above the channel line, and this channel line is what brought you from 160 to 800 on a two-year basis, and the market's saying, you know what? That's not enough growth priced into Netflix right now. You jump over to Netflix, and you're talking about a company currently valued at $357 billion, and maybe the market's saying, you know what? We'll see where we go. You jump over to Disney shares right now, up by 10%. And, yeah, you're going to be bumping up against this area 123. And that's going to take some effort because you have the highs you're bumping into from the beginning of last year right now. And then at 120, you're going to have two price points, the highs of August 2022 and earlier this year for Disney. What else we got pulled up? Let's take a look. Yeah, we talked advanced auto parts. We talked some crude, ASML. Yeah, and this is what is in interesting. So then you have the Fox News employee. Is he an analyst? What is he at Fox News? Personality. Yeah, not even an analyst, but he's a decorated veteran. And so when you look at Gates, right, that's what is interesting because with John Thune, especially in the Senate, I mean, one thing if it was somebody that was more loyal in the Senate, but maybe that's about taking some of the light off this because this is a controversial pick as well. Somebody with just military experience that's a TV personality beyond that. And I think that's the one that's squaring up for the battle in terms of what is really probably going to be a close one in the Senate. Maybe that's where Gates takes some of the heat off there, especially with John Thune there. All right, we talked about Advanced Auto, Disney. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of the stories out this morning. Let's take a look at those yields as we come into this break. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the volatility in this market, but we got the 10-year right now. Yeah, look at these bars, man. On a weekly basis, you take a look at a daily. we got a green bar. That's lower lows and lower highs, and that's higher yield coming at you right now with the dollar at 106.60. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Many 
trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors the reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades at TFNN we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news that's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got a chart here of the VIX. VIX trading at 1405. We take a look at a five minute. We were just down to 1380. That was the lows of yesterday. You take a look at a daily chart. We were at the, you know, what were we trading at? 12.5 for a duration early in the year from about May until July. Uh, if you're looking to buy some volatility, we're getting at much more affordable prices. You back it up to September, we're at 1490. You back it up to August, we're at 1446. So we're below all of those areas. Yeah, we can go lower, but we're we're potentially coming into a volatile period. I don't think I need to tell everybody that. All right, we jump around to some of the other stories I was looking at this morning. Meta. This is just the cost of doing business, but it's a big one, man. And if the EU is coming for them, and they are, all right, they're fined. Eight seven hundred ninety-eight million euros for antitrust. Meta shares down four tenths percent today. Okay, but I don't think Meta is going to receive a lot of friendly behavior from the coming administration. Doesn't mean they're going to tank the equity, but if the EU is coming for them, it's going to be tough in the U.S. for this administration as well. Now Zuckerberg. Is trying to plan for that, but for what it is. And then when you talk about the EU, all right, well, before we get over there, how about this one too? $7 trillion in money market funds. $7 trillion. Yeah. 
That's up another $91 billion in the week through Wednesday. It's a fresh record. Yeah, more than $7 trillion in money market funds. I mean, it speaks to what, what is that money going to do? It's got to do something. And then how about the ECB? Yeah, some people are betting on some big cuts. What is going on on the ECB is not happening right here, man. Um, they are going to be cutting. The market knows it. And you even have some bets out there and wagers to the tune of looking for a 75 basis point cut. You're talking about a bet worth 625 million euros the one thing is that can always be a hedge as well keep that in mind and folks don't forget tonight we got our man basil chapman coming up right now but he is going to be live with opening call subscribers check it out right on the front page of tfnn sectors and stocks for the next market five phase basil chapman live four till five thirty He'll talk about it during his program next, but check it out, folks. Sign up on the front page of TFNN. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Have a great Thursday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, folks.